Welcome back everybody. On today is my 31st update video where I go back to 10 past products in order and take a look at how the original video went and also let you know if anything has changed with that product since my video was posted. Without further delay, let's get right to update number 31. Number 301 was six products under $15 to make your life easier. It's kind of an interesting collection of gadgets. Let's first take a look back at how the original video went. It literally is just a hole in for your burger, but the, I guess the one nice feature is that it actually adjusts so you could have a, a pretty thick burger in there. So I guess when you get down to the bottom, you have to use your hand. You can't, you can't stick your mouth in there. So it's still keeping the mess off me though. These are supposed to be the original no tie elastic shoelaces. And there it is. If I was gonna leave it on these, I'd probably make this a little bit shorter. I think it definitely works better on the tennis shoes. It certainly works though. It's, ve it's very thin. Put some water in my hand. It's pretty soapy, but it's kind of drying right now too. I don't know, I think I, I, think I kind of like this. This is a silicone pan handle cover. Not really much to it, is there? I don't know if it just slides, I might have to use a pothole to hold this in place, which kind of defeats the purpose. Right now it feels pretty good. Oh, it does fit. I mean, it's a little bit loose. Up here towards the top, it feels like it's certainly warmer than down here. But they just, here's how they show it in the picture. Just, just I guess just like that. It kind of sticks way out though, but yeah, we'll see how it looks. I'll be honest, I actually kind of like it. This is actually much better than the drawer I had before. I wish I had done this a lot sooner. JOT stands for just hold it. All right, there we go. It looks nice and sturdy. Let's see, I don't know. This is, I'm simulating a bunch of days here. After a couple days, this has stayed. The razor actually fell off a couple times, but the JOT has not. Admittedly, this is not something I actually have used, but it, it stayed in place. There's actually three of these six that I still use regularly. There's the Jot that I still use in the bathroom for my toothbrush. I've actually moved this a few times from place to place and it still hasn't lost its stickiness. Uh, the only problem is you gotta make sure your toothbrush is dry and you put it up there or it drips. Otherwise, the Jot works quite well. The lock laces, which is I use on one of my main pair of shoes. All right, after a, over a year of use, the laces look good. In fact, the, the shoes are probably worse off than the laces are. So. Uh, this is with regular use. They've actually held up quite well. So looking pretty good. And also the sunglasses holder. Hasn't really changed much. Some of the glasses have, but the holder itself is still there, still in place, still working well. Got a lot of sunglasses, don't I? It's rare for me to have a video of six gadgets and continue to use three of them a year later. So this is actually a pretty good bunch. Number 302 was this potato chip maker. It allows you to cut and cook potato chips right in your microwave. I found that it worked pretty well, but I found that also you can duplicate the results without a gadget at all. Check out some scenes from my original review. So this is pretty much what we're supposed to do here. I know they're supposed to be thin, but that's, that's like a piece of paper. Not only is it thin, but it's not even even. One side is thicker than the other. If I push really hard, I think I get thicker slices. I'll try to pick the thickest chips I can. Here we go. Some of these look pretty good. That's, that's a nice looking chip. All right, there we go. Beautiful, right? Four minutes maximum. Four minutes. All right, let me see. Let me pull one out of here. The texture feels nice. It feels like a potato chip. So I'm, I'm happy about that. Hmm. Oh. I'm slightly surprised that they came out as well as they did. The texture is actually perfect. They're crispy. There's not a lot of them. Let me move on to the recipe and see if that's going to yield better results without a device like this. A little bit of salt. It's not as many chips, but the chips use a lot more potatoes. So actually I'm getting more potatoes and less chips. Let me, uh, let me taste a couple of these. All right, let's try the recipe version. Mm. 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 Even though I ate several of these, the ones out of the potato chip device are just so thin, you don't get a lot of potato chips. These are thicker, even though I cut them pretty thin, these just feel like homemade potato chips more. So in the end, I didn't really use it that much because I found that making without this was just as easy. It might be good for the lazy potato chip maker out there, but for most people, I think it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. 
Number 303 is the Draft Top. This is advertised as sort of a next gen can opener. It was advertised a lot online last year. I didn't really have a lot of luck with this, so check out some scenes from my original review. Uh, it looks kind of like one of those uh, hands free can openers I reviewed last year. Here we go. Draft Top, the can. Okay, I am squeezing the top. Smooth as silk. And it, was, it wasn't done properly. Oh. Oh, that, it's gotta be right. It's gotta be right. And then you just push it in. Oh, I'm getting there. I did it. Oh yeah. Not a lot of people want to have their top in there floating in their beer. Oh, great. I don't like the top in the can. Yeah, this is great technology, man. This is great. All right. That didn't sound good at all. Getting serious here. I'm not messing around. Nothing. Nothing. Okay, I got nothing on this one. Come on now. This is ridiculous. My hand's getting tired from opening three cans. I don't even think this is, I'm not making any progress whatsoever. And they make it look so easy on the video. You know, you have to love modern technology. You know, those old school can openers, they can't compare to this. All right, getting crackle. Oh, we're going faster now. Oh, look at this. He's gliding through it like butter. Oh, I did it. Look at that. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Stella, you came through in the clutch. Thank you very much. It's probably worth noting that Draft Top actually did appear on Shark Tank after my review and it did get a deal, although some of the sharks had the same kind of problems that I did. I think it's an interesting design, but I'm just not a fan. Number 304 was a collection of four unusual gadgets that all surprisingly worked. It consisted of a phone stand, a non-tip can cooler, a car tray, and a very loud whistle. Let's first take a look back at how the original video went. This is a screen holder that attaches to your leg. It should be pretty simple to strap it to your leg. Let's see what happens. I guess it goes like this. That's pretty interesting. You can have it uh, portrait or landscape. I'm gonna be perfectly honest, as ridiculous as this seems, it seems to work. You definitely want to keep your, your leg to be pretty stable, but if I, when I use my hand to touch the screen, it does seem to be pretty stable. This, this is the Toadfish non-tipping can cooler. It's a can cooler and a non-tip holder. Can of soda. That's weird, it makes kind of a, a flatulent sound when it goes in there. That's not going anywhere. Well, maybe I push it too far. <laughs> this is called the multifunctional portable foldable car seat tray, black table car vehicle seat portable food meal snack tray. Not exactly the most memorable name out there, so I'll just put my fry right there. I got a small hamburger. How about if I set it right there for right now? Ten piece chicken nuggets. Oh, it does hold a medium drink. It holds a medium drink. I got a full meal here plus my phone, so I think I'm pretty much set. I think this tray organizer has, works really well. This is a $13 hyper whistle, which is built as the world's loudest whistle. The distance on Google Maps from here to that building over there is about one mile. Stand by and here it comes in a second. I heard it. You did? I heard it, I heard it, I heard it. Oh, wow. I definitely heard that. I was thinking it didn't seem loud with these earplugs in. I took an earplug out and it's loud. So of these four, perhaps surprisingly, the one I use the most is still the car tray because whenever I go out with my kids, one of them is in the back. If we go grab a bite to eat, the car tray is actually quite handy for something like that. The only complaint I have about it is that sometimes it rattles when I drive. I have to kind of mess with it. Other than that, the car tray has been surprisingly useful. Number 305 was a collection of three alternative style belts. It was an interesting collection. Let's first take a look at back at how the original video went. This is the whippy I paid $10.79 for this one. This is advertised as a no buckle, no show stretch belt. It looks like you take the, the unsnap it, feed it through your loops. So I'm gonna snap the first one and continue feeding this one around. And there we go. I guess, I guess that, 
I guess that works. All right, well, here we go. I got some errands to run. Let me see how it feels in the car. It almost doesn't feel like I'm wearing a belt in the front, which is a nice feeling, but my pants are still tight. So I think that in that respect, it definitely works. Number two is the Belt Bro. It basically appears to be just a Velcro band. That's all it looks like. Now this one is pretty simple. It just goes, it just uses two loops. And then you pull it, pull it tight like that. This one was definitely easier to put on and take off than the first one. But once again, you're pulling on the belt loop. Look at that. I can't say I'm a fan of that. Okay, well, what do you think? It definitely looks better with two than just having one on there, I think. It feels like most normal belts, and even the first one I tried, the Whippy, also, they tend to squeeze around your waist. This one seems to squeeze itself together, so it, it's kind of nice that it doesn't pinch. It doesn't squeeze around you. Number three, the most expensive, is the Grip 6 web belt. I paid 35 bucks for this one. First glance, it looks like a regular belt, but it has no holes and no ratchets. This definitely feels more like a traditional belt experience. I'm just putting on a belt. It's a bit awkward to tighten. It just might take some getting used to though. All right, well, I got it on. And that looks and feels like a, like a standard belt. Time to try it out in the car. So the Grip 6 just feels like a regular belt, a very lightweight belt but it doesn't really feel any different than any other belt I've, I've worn. And that leaves me with the Grip 6 as my top choice of these three. That's because it feels more like a belt. It acts more like a belt. The only difference is you don't have any holes, don't have any ratchets. It can basically just be adjusted whatever size you need. So I never really used the Belt Bro or the Whippy. I didn't really like the way they pulled on the pants, but I have used the Grip 6. I would say it's kind of my third string belt right behind two of my ratchet belts that I use the most, the slide belt and the trackline belt. It's a good belt. I don't think I like it as much as ratchet belts, but it has come in handy and I do like the design of it. I think that anybody who's bought the Grip 6 will be happy with it. My 306th review was actually a collection of hot dog gadgets. I had five items that were pretty interesting. Let's first take a look at how the original video went. Press the hot dog down over the serrations. Slide the chamber back on. Simple enough. I guess you just kind of place it over like this. Seems easy enough. Then place the vent tray over the bun. Turn the entire thing over so that the vent tray is on the countertop. Slide the cooking chamber open and dispose of the unwanted fat. And, oh, it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Look at this. Oh, it's a, it's a steamed hot dog and it's cooked and scored. I'm gonna go Oscar Mayer on the left, Ballpark Frank on the right, Ballpark Bun in the back, Wonder Bread Bun in the front. Press the lever down. Buns are in, hot dogs are in, we're cooking. I hear like a crackling, oh! It just popped up but it didn't go up all the way. I feel like something is not right. Oh no, it's a strange burn. Ballpark Bun is, is is stuck in there. The Wonder Bun, even though it's got this strange burn mark there, it actually feels kind of nicely toasted. It says, gently press the hot dog down on the ridges. That wasn't very gentle, but it did go in there. Open the unit. All right, well, that's, uh, that seemed to work pretty well. It's nicely scored. Look at that. Wow. Well, that's going to be a tight squeeze in there. I'll have to put one sideways. You're supposed to basically just use it like a drill bit and go right through it. I don't know. Hey, maybe I'm getting maybe I'm getting there. Oh, come on now. Oh, I'm making progress. Oh yeah. I'm doing it. I guess it made a hole in it. I mean, I'm just gonna we're just gonna put that aside. Is this really necessary? Probably not. That's gonna be a little bit tricky. All right, here's what we got. Looks pretty nice. We got four hot dogs, four buns. Took 15 minutes. So the hot dog toaster, the hot dog oven, were just too big to take up counter space, so I actually ended up putting those away. So maybe not surprisingly, the one that I actually ended up using the most was the hot dog delicious. I can't say I've used it a lot and I don't eat a lot of hot dogs, but when I do and I feel lazy, this is actually a pretty good gadget. Number 307 was an interesting collection of banana gadgets. Let's first take a look at how the original banana gadget video went. It's pretty sturdy. Now what you're supposed to do is just clip a couple of these through the bunch. There's one. And there's, there it is. Seems like it's working. Yay. 
But really all you're supposed to do is just press it into the banana and move along the length of it and it should peel it. Oh, it definitely inserted into the banana, I can tell. Is that all there is to it? Let's see. Oh yeah. No smushed ends. We have a nice non-smushed banana. Oh, I see the banana goes up inside. So you don't have to stop what you're doing. Okay, I get it, I'm feeling it. Push it down, it goes up through there. That last one doesn't like it too much. I guess all you do is you just put the slicer over it and hope the banana's not too curved like this one is. I guess you just gotta find the right angle and then press. Oh wow, these are half inch slices. Boom! You know, that is actually quite satisfying to do that. This is how it, this is how it goes. Wow. <laughs> Small, medium, large. They all worked. I've actually used a couple of these gadgets while dehydrating bananas, but the one I've actually used the most is probably the banana bopper. I leave it in my drawer next to where my bananas are at on the counter and I like using it because it allows me to open the banana without smushing the ends. They were all pretty interesting, but the banana bopper is the one I use the most. Number 308 was a 1974 Ronco ice cream maker that was advertised heavily on TV back in the 70s, especially around the holidays. Let's first take a look at how the original video went. Down here in very small type, this is copyright 1974. Oh, that's not, not much to that, it really is there. Wow, there's, it doesn't seem like there's really much to it. It seems like just an automatic stirrer in a bowl. Well, wow, these are a lot of instructions. I think this quart of ice cream is gonna cost me about 20 bucks. <laughs> cost me about two hours of time. One third cup of evaporated milk, three quarters cup of sugar, tablespoon of gelatin, and one third cup of water. I got to stir this for four minutes. All right, in the cold water until it cools. Add my mixture, two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Finally, I have my mixture. It's gonna go in the freezer, the pre-chill for two hours. Now, you know, I've spent 30 minutes prepping and two hours in the freezer. And I still haven't used the machine yet. All right, here we go. It looks pretty good. Finally, we get to use it after two and a half hours. All right. We are set. Kind of loud. All right, well. Wow, that's loud. So it's gonna be an all day thing for a quart of ice cream. In the grand scheme of things, does 20 minutes of churning in the freezer really make much of a difference when it's already in there for two hours and it's gonna be in there afterwards? Does that 20 minutes really make a difference? Do you need a device to do this? I don't know. No, oh, is it loud? All right, here we go. I'll be honest, right now it feels more like Cool Whip than, than ice cream. How long did that take, Bailey? Four and a half hours? Hmm. 30 minutes of prep time, two hours of pre-chill time, 20 minutes with the product actually spinning the blades and the ice cream, and then another two hours in the freezer. That's only a little bit of time that the Ronco ice cream machine actually did anything. Most of it was me in the freezer. So is a device like this really necessary? I'm not sure. Would it have been just as good without the ice cream maker spinning for 20 minutes? I think it probably would have. Is it the best vanilla ice cream I ever had? No. So yeah, the Ronco ice cream maker was a lot of work for what you get. Maybe it was good in the 70s, but by today's standards, it's kind of a lot of work. I'm more apt to use something like the Ninja Creamy, which I recently reviewed, which does a much better job, a lot less work. It was probably a great invention back in the day, but its time has come and gone. Number 309 was actually a collection of three levitating gadgets, a moon, a UFO, and a globe. Let's first take a look back at how the original video went. So it looks bigger than the photos as always. It seems kind of cheap now that I look at it. It's like there's plastic that's coming apart there. Very, very cheap. So we're supposed to put this in between the North Pole and the top of the product and then pull it out. All right, and it floats. That's all it does. I mean, I guess it looks pretty neat. I don't know. All right, well, I mean, I guess for 27 bucks, it's not terrible. It's kind of small, it's kind of cheap, and it's not as impressive as I hoped it would be, but you know, it's a good start. It's on the low end of the range and it definitely works. I can't say it doesn't work. It works. That's what we got. How does that light up? I thought this lit up. Oh, well. Oh. 
Oh, oh, whoa. That is so cool and it's rotating on its own too. Now that is something that I can geek out about. Very nice. The moon is a hit and it doesn't have to be recharged so it can just kind of go as long as you want to. This one pairs with your phone because you're supposed to play music through there. So that's going to be kind of fun. I didn't like that. It's very touchy getting it, getting it to float. I can do it. Come on. I can feel it. It's almost there. Then yeah, this alien tech Norse bobbles are we need them. Oh, I got it. There it is. I got it. It is floating. Okay, now we turn the light on. Oh, let's play some music. Ooh, let me turn the lights off. Get a little mood going on here for the UFO USB speaker. So if you've watched my channel at all over the last year, you've seen two of those three. That's back there, the UFO and the moon. Those get used a lot, the globe not so much. Let's take a closer look. I gotta say, I don't really use the UFO's uh, music feature hardly at all. I guess I've used it a couple times, usually not though. But it has actually worked flawlessly. I, I've had no problems with it whatsoever. Same with the moon. It's been there uh, every video, spinning like it always does. I tend to put it on the white mode, but sometimes I use the uh, yellow when I want to vary things up. I've been very happy with these for a year. They've worked flawlessly almost every day, so no complaints. The third gadget's kind of been just stuck here for the past year. Nothing's really happened with it. I don't even really levitate it because it's so weak. It doesn't really fall off. This was the least impressive of those. It's not even really worth it to try to get it to, uh, to levitate because it ends up falling anyways. So the other two I liked, this one, not as much. Number 310 was a collection of tiny flashlights. Let's take a look back at how the original review went. Got the Night Fox, the Keymate, the Lumen Top, the Olight, the Aurora, and the Through Night. These two are under 100 lumens. These two are between 1 and 500 lumens, and these are over 500 lumens. Wow, that is small. Look at that. Now, this is a two handed operation, but it only has one mode on and off. That's it. 15 lumens. It's very interesting. I, I can't wait to see how this one works out. Three modes 16 lumen, 35, and strobe. Very nice. Still small. High, medium, low you just keep turning it to cycle through it includes this diffuser so you can diffuse the light definitely one of the smaller of the of the group here you turn it once for low and you just keep turning to get high low they say is five lumens high is 150 and this is supposed to be 650 lumens you have four modes moonlight two lumens low which is 20 lumens medium which starts at 360 and goes down to 100 after 100 seconds and high, which is 650, which goes down to 100 lumens after 100 seconds. Definitely bigger than the others, but this one supposedly goes up to 3,700 lumens. So you have low at 30, medium at 366, high at 1712. If I double click at the turbo, 3757. This would be the Night Fox, one mode. 16. Right, that's a 35. The high mode is supposed to be 150 lumens. Pretty bright. The low mode, it's really kind of hard to tell. So there's the high. This is supposed to be 120 lumens. Whoa, pretty cool. And then even without the diffuser, there's a, an O-ring in there that glows. So they call the first mode moonlight. The next mode they call that low at 20. Medium is 360, but it steps down to 100 lumens after 100 seconds. And high is 650 lumens, that steps down to 100 lumens after 100 seconds. Low medium and that's pretty bright but look at that how bright that is but for me my vote if i was going to do this all over and just buy one i'd go with the aurora because it has a nice balance between compactness and brightness my pick and they're all pretty good is the aurora so i've actually given several of these flashlights away and the one i use the most is the aurora by Roby vaughn this one's come in handy a few times still on my keychain the only problem I had with this is one time I wanted to use it and I hadn't charged it for a while and it was dead. But otherwise, it's actually worked quite well. All of them have. I think it was actually a pretty good collection of flashlights. If I look back at this collection of gadgets, I would say the two levitating gadgets is part of my set I use a lot. And the lock laces I probably use almost on a daily basis. So I've had some pretty good ones in this bunch. Quite a few of them I actually reviewed and never looked back on because they weren't that useful. But I'll be back in about another month with my next update video. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.